Welcome, welcome Aries to the year of 2022. It's going to be amazing and I'm so happy that you're here with me to learn about it today. Now I'm going to start off by telling you that this is a year in which the Lord of your story, Mars, especially Pisces, uh, Aries rising but also Sun and Moon, has initiated for you an amazing journey. And that's partly because of where he was rising in the sky in November of 2021. And that story will be ongoing. And secondly, because the eclipses are happening through the Scorpio and Taurus corridor, those Scorpio eclipses are going to have a huge impact on you guys because, of course, Mars is the ruling planet of who you are. And that ruling planet owns Scorpio. Now, before we go into some of those details, and we'll be covering all of the planets, Saturn and, and the, the eclipses and um, everything, and we'll do the whole story, Jupiter, what's going on, I'm going to tell you that I would love for you to like and subscribe and uh, follow me here and hit the bell for notifications as well. This is a 30 this is a short quickie piece, uh, maybe 15 to 25 minutes, depends on how long I feel like going, of uh, what is a longer up to 75 minute deep, deep dive forecast into your year ahead. And if you want to purchase that, please go ahead and check the description box below where you can grab the year ahead for yourself or the whole bundle of every sign uh, and do your friends and family as well. So let's start off just by saying every year I like to do this and I like to grab a card from the Animal Spirit deck by a beautiful woman named Kim Kranz and give you a sort of totem animal vibe for the year ahead. Now there's some unicorns and really cool stuff in here. So you might not even get a real animal. And if you continue to buy the next piece of this, you'll get another card from another Oracle deck of mine for your year ahead. So before we get to the astrology, I will draw that card for you so that Aries, you can see what's going on for you in terms of a particular animal ally energy that supports you throughout the journey of 2022. So I'm going to draw the card now from a fanned deck on my lap. And for you, Aries, what do you get? Well, I'm an Aries sun and moon, so I'm surprising myself. Firefly. All right. I like the sound of that, guys. Firefly. So let's see what it says for us, because I am not, of course, familiar with how she interprets the firefly. Um, I've had this book for a few years. A client gave me this card deck uh, back in 2016 or 17. Okay, which is a really sweet gift. Okay, so I'm just opening it up. Give me a second. It's taking me a while to find it. There we go. So the key words for Firefly are inspired and fantastical, yet fleeting. Um, the Firefly contains the light of a thousand stars, pure, radiant, and illuminating. And this high frequency charge, Aries, cannot be sustained for long. Therefore, Firefly indicates a moment of inspiration and of awakening. So think about the year 22, okay, being a moment of inspiration and awakening. There is firefly energy behind every poem, song, and every invention. And our job is to be ready to harness this creative spirit. And when it graces our path, what can you do to support this precious and elusive light? When you're in balance with firefly in 22, your keywords are you writes, creates, and brainstorms. <laughs> well, as someone who's writing two books right now or got the idea to write them, I like that one for 22. When you're out of balance, burnt out and feels dull and keep yourself in balance, write a poem or draw. So get creative, get Firefly Sparky, you Aries. So let's go ahead now and talk a little bit about Mars. And so, you know, if you're an Aries, sun, moon, especially rising, Mars is your, your planet. It's very important to watch what he does in the sky. Like when he retrogrades at the end of 2022, that's gonna be important. I will be covering that in the longer recording. But to start out, you know, Mars came into, first of all, Mars died and was reborn in Libra, October 7th, 21, and is rising into visibility in Scorpio around, it was November 22nd, 21. Those energies play out for you, Aries, over the next two years as specific meanings. And let's just talk about that really briefly, because it certainly impacts 2022, doesn't it? So with the death and rebirth of Mars in the sign of Libra, for all of you, Aries, that's a specific one of 12 whole sign houses in your chart. And therefore, it has very specific meaning to you and how this death and rebirth of the Lord of your energy of your chart 
has um, a potential to offer you some new beginnings and some endings in some area of your life. That happens to be in the house of relationship. Why? Because the seventh house is opposite your Aries first house rising sign energy. And it means that there's going to be new beginnings as well as endings in primary significant relationships, such as business partnerships, clients and client base, audiences and fans, and marriage partner. If you are like me and you are a single Aries, you're probably going to find somebody in the next couple of years. But a lot of the momentum will be in this 2022 because this is going to be where Mars has just freshly hatched. He's still a young and vibrant Mars from his death and rebirth in the heart of the sun. It's called his heliacal rising. And he's still carrying all that fresh new Mars energy in 2022. Whereas we get into 23 and he starts to become a grumpy old warrior with some battle scars and he's getting tired and he's going to become invisible in the sky in the summer of 23. So we get a lot of new relationship momentum as we have a vigorous Lord of our chart for our single Aries, but also for your client base and audience and, and maybe business partnerships to come up a notch. Now, if you can hear that construction, no fuck, no kidding i'm doing mars and that he rules tool belts construction and you know all that stuff and someone's drilling above my head so i'm sorry i hope that's not too loud i can hear it but i'm hoping you guys can um so what else i want to tell you i want to say that the idea here in general is that if you're even if you're not single even if you have a love partnership in your life you're still going to get a lot of juice, okay, by having this heliacal, heliacal death, I mean, the death and rebirth piece, Mars died in the heart of the sun, Kazemi the sun, in Libra. So this can definitely be an important area for fortifying your marriage. If you're with somebody, you know, dating, then you become engaged or move in together or announce a wedding or have a wedding, things like that. The other element is that Mars rises into visibility in your natal eighth house. And your eighth house of your chart is about your money. And so this is amazing next two years in which your earnings and money are going to go up. Now, not necessarily your hustle money. Okay. Like that's kind of second house, you know, your salary, your paycheck, you know, your, 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 the stuff you get from the, the direct work you do with people. Um, you know, that thing, like, you know, get a reading with me, you pay me some money. That's my second house earnings as an Aries. It is your eighth house money, inheritances. Um, yeah, it's going to be a lottery win because it's other people's money and the government owns that house. The money, uh, government owns the money that becomes the lottery win that you get. So government monies, taxes, tax rebates, uh, inheritance your spouse's money, business partnership money, uh, membership fee money, royalty income money, uh, all kinds of those money things are Martian for you over the next year, 22, where Mars has risen in the third week of November into his visibility in the morning sky and becoming more and more visible as time passes. So slightly visible in late November, more so in December and really visible by January, most places in the world. So consider that you are a new lease on your wealth coming courtesy of your Lord, uh, the Lord of your chart, not the Lord of your life, but you know what I mean, uh, Mars. And so this is a time, by the way, that's pretty rare. A Mars will only rise in your eighth house of that kind of money, right? Once every 24 years. So because he takes two years to go around the Zodiac, and therefore there's 12 signs, it'll be 24 years or so before he's back to rise again in Scorpio. So you can really say to yourself how precious this year and a half ahead is, but certainly in much of 2022. So I want you to lean on that idea that your money is getting much better Aries throughout 22 and into 23, and your primary partnerships are accelerating. Again, as I said, if you're single, you're going to meet someone. If you're with someone, you'll get married or you're going to plan a wedding or, you know, if you're going to move in together, it's going to take everything up a notch. It's going to be a sense of a, re a beginning. Now, Mars did go to the heart of the sun and die there in your seventh house, which will mean that some relationships, friendships and business partnerships and marriage partnerships may come to an end. But if they do, Mars is such a good guy for you. He's bringing uh, endings that you need in order to move forward in life. So these are not malicious endings. Okay, these are good endings. Now, let's talk about the eclipse cycle. Um, Scorpio is where the south node is entering in the in new year in January. Well, the north node of the moon is in Taurus on the other side of that axis. Now, Scorpio is your Lord Mars's feminine sign. 
okay? This is where he is more in his subtle, stealthy, spy-like, um, fluid energy. You'll find a lot of energy around Scorpio Mars energy to do with things like investigation and research and occult magic and mysteries and uh, sleuthing and that kind of thing. And because he is the owner of that piece of real estate and he is the Lord of your rising sign, we're gonna really pay attention to these eclipses for you with that a south node eclipse cycle, Aries, sun, moon, and especially rising sign going through, yes, that eighth house of money. And so here's an exciting time where eclipses start to propel something. Now, sometimes the South Node is disappointments and letting go and releasing. So if you've been dependent on a spouse's money, it's time to let that go. If you've been dependent on a grant from the government or, you know, your inheritance money, it's time to let that go. You know, it's literally like the South Node is going through your earnings house. So I'm just going to say, let's earn more money. Let's make more money. Let's get some more money coming in. And it's a little bit at odds with that original thing I said with Mars is rising in the eighth house, but it's, so it's kind of a, and either not an either or, but an and. Mars's heliacal rising in your eighth house is going to portend greater wealth through other people's money and all the other means I mentioned, including inheritances for some of you. And yet with the North Node in Taurus in your second house of earnings, possessions and all of that, that's also going to really heat up during 2022. And with the South Node going through your eighth house of you know, the other people's money, it can also mean the South Node is like a basket, like a, it looks like a horseshoe that goes this way, like a chalice. And it could actually be almost like karmic rewards or things you carried over from other lives. And this little like chalice is moving through that eighth house. So you could argue that you're going to have some destined and karmic sources of chunks of money coming to you suddenly. And because the eighth house is in a trine relationship to the house of real estate, the fourth house and the earnings hustle energy of the North Node traveling through your second house is sextiling the house of real estate, the fourth house for a lot of you Aries buying and selling and moving things to do with home and real estate are going to be a priority throughout 2022 into the spring of 23 when we still feel the waves of energy coming through from this particular eclipse cycle. Now, because I don't have your chart in front of me, I'm not going to go through each of the eclipses because each eclipse is happening at a certain degree, right? And I can say something about that, but I will touch base on one of them. One of the eclipses, right? Um, there are four eclipses in 22 on this corridor, one in 23, and there was one on the other side of it in November of 21. And I'll touch on this one eclipse, which is to say, really pay attention to the eclipse that's going to happen let me get my eclipse cycle chart. Sorry, I just realized it's on my desk. So I'm back. Really, really pay attention to the Scorpio total lunar eclipse of the 25th degree of Scorpio on May the 16th. Now, you know, if you have your rising sign at 25 degrees or any planet at 25 degrees, um, not your rising sign, because I'm doing you Aries rising, but if you have any planets at 25 Scorpio, okay, at all, or near 25 of Taurus, so that is a very hot axis of the chart right now, as well as around 25 Aquarius for you, or 25 of Leo, so that makes an equidistant cross, so any planets within three degrees of that 25th degree in any of those signs, then you're going to feel this eclipse a little bit more intensely. Now, the thing with this, this is a lunar eclipse and it's total. So it's powerful by totality. It's going to be an opportunity for you to perceive something in a new, fresh way, revealing to you something about your money. OK, and so it's an exciting kind of monetary energy, a fullness coming, a completion, but also something heating up here in the money corridor. And because it's a total eclipse, right, not a partial and it's, therefore it's very strong. I would say to you that a lot of you will experience this uptick. Um, or this rising into fullness and, and, and fruition, fruiting, fruition, fullness of something to do with your finances, especially eight house types of finances. And it may very well be connected this full moon uh, in the month of May on the 16th, and you will feel the eclipse up to a month before and up to six months after in terms of the way it plays out. It may very well be connected to the new moon in um, Scorpio 
And I'm going to tell you what the date of that new moon in 21 was. So you can go back to the Scorpio new moon, right? Uh, November the 4th, 2021. What was going on in November of 21, okay? That is coming to a great fruiting and fruition financially for you. Well, uh, I don't know, but it's going to be pretty powerful. And the other eclipse that I'm going to mention here, and I, and I, as I said, without seeing your chart, there's no way I can tell you which eclipses are the most powerful, but I am pretty enchanted by an eclipse happening on April 30th at, in Taurus next year. And I love this 10 degree eclipse. Why? Because it's happening on a day in which the sky is full of juice and through, full of sparkle. So let's talk about that for a sec. First of all, if you have planets with the three degrees of 10 degrees Taurus, uh, you're going to feel this eclipse a little bit more than most people. Similarly, within 10 degrees of Scorpio, Aquarius, or Leo, those are the uh, all of the fixed signs. That said, the eclipse is happening on a day, day April 30th, in which the sky is filled with an illustrious triple conjunction that happens once every 150 years. That's Neptune moving through the sign of Pisces in his modern dignity, Jupiter moving through the sign of Pisces once every 12 years in his essentially his um, traditional dignity in Pisces, and then Venus exalted moving through Pisces. So April's full of that Pisces juice, right? Um, I mean, everything's alive. The hills are alive with the sound of music. It's in your 12th house. That can be revenues of foreign lands. It can be um, uh, moving to a foreign shore. That can be a, a spiritual awakening or a breakthrough tied to this eclipse. But you know, the 12th house can bring money too as well as money for buying real estate or selling real estate or unexpectedly good money from the house of inheritances in the eighth house as well. It's all in a trine relationship. And on April 30th, those three planets are conjunct. They're all holding hands together. And this is a once every 150 year event. And it's going to be on the day of the eclipse. And because this is happening from your 12th house to your second house, there is a connection between the 12th house and the second house. So not, you know, disconnected from each other. They can witness each other and therefore there's even more power. And it's about energetically the money story, right? It's activating all of the angles. The eighth is a money angle, right? So is the second. And your 12th house can be a money angle. And it's a flowing harmonious angle between your second house and your 12th house. It's one of a sextile, the nature of Venus, which is a goddess of money and a goddess of luck. So that eclipse may, yes, be taking place on April the 30th, but it's going to flow out at least up to six months, that solar eclipse up to six months after the eclipse. And you can maybe feel some of it up to a month before. And there's that construction up there. So Aries, that is a teaser of what's up ahead for you in the next year. And there's so much more. So I'm gonna close this section out right now uh, for all of those who are just watching this on YouTube. Remind you, don't forget to like, subscribe, go ahead and buy the All Signs Bundle for 22 if you want, and go ahead and check out the um, my newsletter down below. Um, I have a subscription newsletter called Cosmic Moonshine, a swig of a weekly astrology news. I go into great depths about the week ahead in a written format. You'll get more depth there than you will hear from me on this channel. And you also get in, uh, invited to be uh, in a free draw for a reading once a month. Uh, you get a 30% discount code for a reading with me and you get access to my uh, annual perfections course, which you can learn how to use this divine timing tool in your life, even if you're not an astrologer and you get to access to that course immediately. So once you sign up, so I'm trying to grow my email list so I have a way to connect to you outside of the land of YouTube. All right. And as of this recording, which I'm doing in November of 21, I have about 750 people on my list for the Cosmic Moonshine that I started a year ago. And I'm hoping you'll join me there as well. Plus you get early bird discounts and special notices, etc. Thanks for listening, YouTube people. Go ahead, buy the whole thing if you want. And I'll see you, the rest of you, on the other side of this recording for more info and juice about the incredible 22 year ahead Aries.